All right, so today we are looking at this paper called The Illusion of Thinking, Understanding the Strengths and Limitations of Reasoning Models Via the Lens of Problem Complexity, from researchers at Apple. The paper tackles what I think is a really important question about these new reasoning models like OpenAI so one DeepSeek R1, and Claude's thinking variants. Basically, are they actually reasoning or are they just doing some fancy pattern matching with extra tokens? The core idea behind large reasoning models is that they generate these detailed thinking processes before giving you their final answer and they've shown some pretty impressive results on reasoning benchmarks. But here's the thing, the authors are asking whether these improvements come from actual reasoning capabilities or just from having way more computed inference time, plus potentially being trained on the benchmark data. The main contributions of this paper are as follows. First, they design controllable puzzle environments that let them systematically vary problem complexity without the data contamination issues you get with standard math benchmarks. Second, they identify three distinct performance regimes based on problem complexity. Third, they show that reasoning models hit a scaling wall where they actually start using fewer thinking tokens as problems get harder, which is counterintuitive. And fourth, they analyze what's actually happening inside the thinking traces to understand the reasoning patterns. Now, let's talk about how they actually test these models. They use four different puzzle environments. Tower of Hanoi, which is the classic disk moving puzzle. Checker jumping, where you swap positions of colored checkers. River crossing, where you must transport people or objects across a river using a boat with limited capacity while following specific constraints about who or what can be together. And Blocks World, where you rearrange stacks of blocks. What's interesting about using these puzzles is that you can systematically control their complexity. For Tower of Hanoi, you just add more disks. For checker jumping, you add more checkers and so on. And you can verify every single move with a deterministic simulator to check if the model is making valid moves or not. Now, the authors compared reasoning models with their non-thinking counterparts under equivalent inference compute budgets. They test models like Claude 3.7 Sonnet with and without thinking, DeepSeek R1 versus V3, and various O3 mini configurations. And for each puzzle instance, they generate multiple samples and analyze both final accuracy and the intermediate reasoning traces to understand what's happening during the thinking process. The main finding is this three regime behavior that's quite different from what you see on math benchmarks. In the low complexity regime, non-thinking models actually outperform reasoning models and are more token efficient, which suggests that for simple problems, the overhead of extended reasoning actually hurts performance. In the medium complexity regime, the reasoning models start to show their advantage because the additional thinking helps them explore multiple solution paths and self-correct when they make mistakes. But then in the high complexity regime, both types of models completely collapse to zero accuracy. And here's the weird part. The reasoning models actually start using fewer thinking tokens as problems get harder, despite having plenty of token budget available. This last finding is particularly troubling because it suggests these models somehow know when a problem is too hard and just give up rather than trying harder. Also, when they analyze the actual reasoning traces, they find some really revealing patterns. For simple problems, the models often find the correct solution early, but then continue exploring incorrect alternatives. This overthinking phenomenon wastes compute and sometimes leads them to second-guess correct answers. For medium complexity problems, they typically explore many incorrect solutions before finding correct ones later in the thinking process, which shows that the self-reflection mechanism can work but requires extensive exploration. And for high complexity problems, they just fail to find any correct solutions at all, often getting stuck in loops or making the same types of errors repeatedly. One of the most surprising findings comes from their experiment where they literally give the model the complete algorithm for solving Tower of Hanoi. You'd think this would help since now the model just needs to execute the steps rather than discover the solution. 
but as shown in figure 8, the performance is basically identical with or without the algorithm. This really drives home that the limitation isn't about not knowing how to solve the problem, but about the fundamental inability to execute precise logical steps consistently, which is pretty concerning for systems that are supposed to be good at reasoning. The models seem to struggle with maintaining state consistency across multiple steps and following algorithmic instructions even when explicitly provided. Another weird finding in figure 8c and 8d is that models show very different failure patterns across puzzles. Claude can make over 100 correct moves in Tower of Hanoi before failing, but can barely make 5 correct moves in River Crossing suggesting these models might be relying more on memorized patterns than actual reasoning. This discrepancy is hard to explain if the models truly had general reasoning capabilities, and it points to the possibility that performance on Tower of Hanoi benefits from it being a well-known puzzle that appears frequently in training data, while river crossing variants with more than two actor-agent pairs are likely much rarer. Now let me tell you about some limitations and my thoughts on this work. While the puzzle environments allow for very controlled experiments, they're still relatively narrow compared to real-world reasoning tasks, and the authors acknowledge they're limited to black box API access for most models, which prevents deeper architectural analysis. The puzzles also test a specific type of algorithmic reasoning that involves discrete state transitions and may not generalize to other forms of reasoning like mathematical proof construction or causal inference. The counterintuitive finding that models think less when problems get harder is particularly troubling because it suggests these systems lack the kind of persistent systematic exploration you'd expect from true reasoning and the failure to execute given algorithms points to deep issues with logical consistency. While the paper's experimental design is solid and the findings are compelling, I do wonder if the authors might be slightly too pessimistic about what these models can do in domains where the reasoning is less about strict logical rules and more about flexible problem solving. Overall, while the reasoning model hype train keeps rolling with each new release claiming better benchmark scores, this paper provides much needed systematic analysis showing that we are still far from models that can truly reason in a generalizable way and that the thinking in these models might be more of an illusion than a revolution. The work raises important questions about whether current approaches based on reinforcement learning and extended chain of thought are sufficient for achieving genuine reasoning capabilities or if we need fundamentally different architectures and training methods.